In the dusty deserts of the American West once roamed a man like no other. He was a legend, a true pioneer of his time. He's Johnny Behan, Sheriff of Cochise County, Arizona. Behan is a man of many talents. He is resourceful, brave, and cunning, always one step ahead of his enemies. He knew the land like the back of his hand and used that knowledge to his own advantage. In this video, we'll explore the life and legacy of Johnny Behan. Come with us back in time to the days of the Wild West and discover the incredible story of Arizona's pioneering sheriff. Honor the life of a true American hero. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. John Harris Behan was born on October 24th, 1844 in Westport, Missouri, now Kansas City. He's the third child in a family of nine. His father is Peter Behan, a carpenter from County Kildare, Ireland, and his mother is Sarah Ann Harris, a native of Madison County, Kentucky. Johnny was named after his mother, but interestingly, the 1900 public federal census indicated his birth date as 1845. Behan moved west to San Francisco, where he worked as a miner and freighter. During the American Civil War, he joined the Carlton's Column of Union Volunteers as a 19-year-old civilian employee. His bravery was soon tested at the Battle of Apache Pass on July 15, 1862. Behan's amazing acumen in battle marked him as a man of outstanding talent. After the war, Behan settled in Tucson in 1863, where he found work and began to make a name for himself. In 1864, he served as secretary to Arizona's first legislative assembly in Prescott, the territory's capital. This brought young Behan, then 19, into contact with some of the most influential men in the state. In 1865, Johnny Behan arrived in Prescott, the new capital of the Arizona Territory. He quickly made a name for himself in real estate and mining. While exploring the banks of the Verde on February 8, 28, 1866, Behan and five other men were ambushed by Indians. However, Behan's courage and quick thinking helped turn the tide of the battle and he rose to fame in his act of bravery. Later, Behan also ran a successful sawmill demonstrating his keen entrepreneurial spirit. It was during this time that Behan met and fell in love with Harriet Zaff, the daughter of Sheriff John P. Bork. In 1866, Behan was appointed Sheriff of Yavapai County by his future father-in-law, John P. Bork. Behan's tenure as t the police chief was marked by his outstanding leadership and commitment to justice. After two years, Behan resigned to run for the position of Yavapai County Recorder, a job he won in 1868 at the age of 23. The position of the Yavapai County Clerk is one of the most important in the county, as the clerk is responsible for maintaining accurate records of the collection of all taxes. Whenever not in office, Behan remains an active member of the community, often spending his spare time working at the local pub or mine. On May 22, 1875, Victoria filed for divorce on the grounds of Behan's unfaithfulness and public presence in the notorious prostitution houses of Prescott. News of their divorce spreads quickly, tarnishing Behan's reputation and making him the laughing stock of the town. The once respected police chief has fallen from grace. The divorce scandal makes it difficult for him to regain the public's trust. Johnny Behan arrived in Tombstone in September 1880 and quickly landed his job as a bar manager at the infamous Grand Hotel, a favorite place for the cowboys to live, outlaws in a good place to make political connections. He also became a co-owner of the Dexter Livery Stable with John Dunbar, which supplies horses to local entrepreneurs. 
During this time, Behan became famous for grafting and was uh, considered the leader of the 10% ring mission. Allegations of corruption and bribery frequently surfaced during his tenure as police chief. On January 31, 1882, Behan was arrested for collecting $300 bills twice and charged before Justice Stilwell, but was discharged for technical reasons. In 1882, after the South Pacific Railroad completed the tracks and built facilities throughout northern Cochise County, Behan valued them at a staggering $8 million before the surprise of the supervisory board. Ultimately, the rating was reduced to $1 million, bringing the amount Behan received down to $25,000. These incidents are a testament to Behan's corrupt ways and the complexity of Arizona's political and law enforcement systems of the time. The people of Arizona deserved better than officials who prioritize their interest over those they must serve and protect. In August 1881, Behan fired his deputy, Frank Stilwell, for accounting irregularities. Stilwell was arrested by a combined federal team and a sheriff a month later for a robbery at the Bisbee stage, an act that would indirectly lead to the OK Corral gunfight. Behan played a key role in the events leading up to the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral on October 26, 1881. By city ordinance, he attempted to disarm the armed cowboys. Despite Behan's efforts to convince Frank McLaurie, Frank insists that he will only give up his gun after Sheriff Virgil Earp and his brothers are disarmed. While Ike Clanton was preparing to leave town, Frank McLaurie decided to stay behind to take care of some business. A letter from their brother William McLaurie, a judge in Fort Worth, Texas, later revealed that both Frank and Tom had business plans before leaving town to visit him in Fort Worth. Billy Clanton, who rode with Frank, was also planning to go with them. After Behan talked to the cowboys, he saw the Earps and Holiday walking down Fremont Street, and he stopped them at Bower's Butcher Shop. Wyatt Earp claims that Beham provided them with conflicting information. First, he tells Virgil, for God's sake, don't go down there or you'll be killed. However, when Virgil replies that he intends to disarm them, Behan says that he disarmed them. Later, Behan asserted, that he went to the Cowboys so solely for the purpose of capturing and disarming them. Behan's actions that led to the gunfight have been the subject of much debate and controversy. Some historians suggest that Behan played a role in instigating the conflict. Others suggested that Behan was simply trying to keep the peace and stop the bloodshed. Regardless of his intentions, Behan's involvement in the events leading up to the gunfight played an important role in shaping the outcome. The gunfight at the OK Corral was a devastating event that left three cowboys dead and Virgil Morgan and Doc Holliday wounded. After the gunfight, the lawmen were taken to their homes and Johnny Behan, the sheriff, told Wyatt Earp he had to arrest him. Wyatt paused for two or three seconds and replied very wryly, I'm not going to be arrested today. I'm right here and going nowhere. You've lied to me. You told me these men were disarmed. I went to disarm them. Under territorial law, Ike Clanton filed murder charges against four lawmen, and Behan testified against the prosecution at the preliminary hearing, supporting Clanton's version of events. He testified that the cowboys did not resist and that they raised their hands and took off their coats to show that they were unarmed. Behan also testified that he heard Billy Clanton pled not to be shot because he didn't want to fight. He testified that Tom McLaurie had opened his jacket to show that he was unarmed and that the first two shots were fired by Earp's group. He asserted that Holiday fired the first shot from a nickel-plated revolver, but the coroner testified that Tom McLaurie was killed by a shotgun blast. According to the court, Holiday must have walked down Fremont Street carrying a handgun 
set it aside to draw the pistol, fired the first shot, possibly at Billy Clanton, and then picked up a shotgun to kill Tom McLaurie, all in seconds. Behan's sympathies with the Cowboys were widely known, and documents were discovered in 1997 showing that he served as a loan guarantor for Ike Clanton during the subsequent Spicer hearing. It was clear from Behan's testimony that he supported Clanton's side and his claims were highly controversial. Even so, the court ultimately ruled that the Earps acted within the bounds of the law. Justice Wells Spicer ruled on November 30th that there was not enough evidence to charge the men. The O.K. Corral shootout remains one of the most famous gunfights in American history and its legacy lives on today in movies, books, and popular culture. Years after the famous gunfight, Johnny Behan continues to spread malicious rumors about the Earp brothers. In an article published by the Washington Post on December 7, 1897, Behan was quoted as saying that the Earps were responsible for the brutal conflict at the O.K. Corral. According to him, Earps was pursuing the nefarious interests of the Clanton brothers and McLowry. And when they did not receive their fair share, they turned against their former allies and vowed revenge. Behan then claims that he and a team must kick Earps out of town to avoid further violence. John Behan breathed his last at St. Mary's Church in Tucson, Arizona on June 7, 1912. His death was a great loss to the community, and his funeral was organized by the Arizona Pioneers Historical Association. The eulogy read out at the funeral acknowledged his important roles in society and described him as positive, loyal, and honest. The official death certificate lists arteriosclerosis as the main cause of his death. However, it was also revealed that he had con contracted syphilis 30 years earlier while serving as Tombstone's sheriff. Information provided by his son, Albert, who was present at the time of his father's death. John Behan was buried the day after his death in Tucson's Holy Hope Cemetery. Old West history enthusiast placed a commemorative plaque near the site in 1990. Although Behan's reputation may have been tarnished by his support of some of the most notorious outlaws of the Wild West, he is still considered a respected and important member of his community. His passing marks and the end of an era, but his legacy remains an integral part of the rich history of the American West. We hope you enjoyed learning about Johnny Behan, Arizona's pioneering sheriff. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.